Hello, I'm Carol Rorick, and I'm here to tell you a little bit today about our version of my story, which is faith in business. And I am a member of St. Michael. I've been here about five years now. I'm delighted to be here and have to come here uh, in that time. And also to share that I'm also a business owner. I own BKM Total Office of Texas, which is a commercial furniture business, and I've been doing that over 20 years. So I'm delighted to share with you our guest today, Diane Pattison, who I met as I journeyed on my business journey here in Dallas. And she has a wonderful story to share with us today about her journey in faith and business. So Diane, you've had a very interesting journey. You started out on a farm in Oregon. Then you became an executive in a Fortune 500 company. And then you founded a global ministry for women in the workplace while being married and raising a blended family. Tell us a little bit about your story. Well, thank you, Carol. It is such a pleasure to be here and to be with all of you, um, albeit online. Uh, I thought what I do is share sort of four turning points in my life that sort of lead to why I felt called to start forward. So as Carol mentioned, the beginning of my life, I was actually uh, in a raised in a farm family in Oregon, and my mom and dad were really my first mentors in my life. Um, not only did my dad give me opportunities that a typical 16-year-old wouldn't have, like managing crews of 60 people picking peaches or pears or whatever, um, but he really treated me like his right-hand business partner. So it really built confidence in me. And my mom, through her words, always told me, you can be president of the United States if you want to. So I really owe a lot to my parents for their mentorship, um, for th their faith was a part of their life. And if any of you have grown up on a farm, you know some years are really bad and you have to have a strong faith to get you through it. And then some years are good. Um, so then my second sort of chapter of my story was after growing up on a farm in Harrisburg, Oregon, I went to Oregon State University. And through that, I had two mentors in my life, Dan and John, who are still friends to this day. And um, as I majored in fashion merchandising, I realized that was not what I wanted to do. And Dan and John said to me when I came back to school my senior year, just apply to Harvard Business School. So I did, and I got in. And so it was really Dan and John that opened up this global world for me um, that I was able to see way past what I knew to be the farm in Harrisburg, Oregon. So that sort of chapter two is going to um, Harvard Business School. And as I came out of Harvard Business School, I went to work for Trammell Crow Company. So now I'll move to sort of a personal side of my life um, in my third chapter, or third turning point. And unfortunately, I um, went through a divorce with my first husband. And unfortunately, he had really deceived me from the moment I had met him. Um, but why I look back on that as a positive turning point was that it was really that time that I became desperately dependent on Jesus as my Savior and the Holy Spirit as my guide. And so um, today, that's how I do live my life and what the foundation of my life is. And I don't think until I had that major failure in my life that I really understood what that was all about. So um, then I went on to move to Dallas, Texas with Trammell Crow Company, and um, God always redeems, and I was blessed to meet six years later my now husband, Chris Pattison, and we have a blended family with uh, four adult children now, and the greatest part is now I have a granddaughter. And then the fourth part of my story that I wanted to share was um, 
I had this amazing over 20 year career with Trammell Crow. I ended up to be on the executive team. We were a Fortune 1000, we went public, and then uh, we sold to CB Richard Ellis or CBRE, where um, I had the opportunity to serve. And then one of my classmates from Harvard Business School came to me and Jeff said, hey, I want you to be my global COO of Prologis. And the first time he came to me, I said, no, I really like what I'm doing. But at that time, I felt the Holy Spirit really calling me to a ministry for women in the workplace. And I didn't know what that was about. But I said to Chris, hey, you know what? I, I, give me three years. And you know, if this doesn't work, actually my termination agreement is equal to three years if I would have stayed in my current job. And it was really at that point that um, the 2008, when the financial crisis hit, Prologis was headquartered in Denver. My family's here in Dallas. I negotiated I would only be there two days a week. And the culture of Prologis was we make all decisions in one conference room with the other five executive team, and my heart was with my family here. So in 2009, we decided to part ways, and it was really another positive turning point, even though I was very humbled at the time because I never had a point in my life where I didn't have a business card that defined who I was, but God was doing a work in me. And it was at that point I decided to start Forward, which now serves 162,000 women in the workplace a year. Um, and I sort of tiptoed into it. I did consulting, and I also serve on boards, which I do today. But that really brought me to where I am today. What a great story. A lot of turns. And as we all find that life puts little obstacles in the way and somehow God gives us a new path. And I am associated with Forward now on the advisory board. I was drawn in by what this program does for so many women, including myself. And it is a gift to all business women. And it's a method that um, Diane created. So tell us a little bit more about Forward how, how it was set up and what it's grown to be. Yeah, thank you, Carol. Well, first of all, I just want to say to what Carol said, it's really to God be the glory. I would have never thought that the need would be what it is today and that we would be serving 162,000 globally. And I'm going to share a little bit about our sea level women, which um, Carol's a part of that group. So today, our vision is to build a global community of Christian women in the workplace. Why? So we can help them reach their God-given potential with confidence. And we do it three ways. And I'll share with you a little bit of pivoting we had to do with COVID-19, but not a lot. Um, so when we, we started Forward, which it was really just a few part-time people and me in 2011, we um, decided we would be virtual because we wanted to allow our employees to be able to have work-life integration. So we have some young moms on our team now that are so grateful for that. But we connect our women three ways. We connect them through our digital content, which um, we're really excited because we translate in Spanish, but we're going to start translating in Chinese in September. So that's going to be really exciting. Second, we meet in community groups, and our community groups used to be face-to-face. But through COVID, we had to pivot. And so now all of our community groups across the nation, we're in 27 cities, meet on Zoom. But the great thing is our attendance has gone up 86% in April. And I think it's because women don't have to deal with traffic, childcare. Uh, it's the first time I'm gonna go. I'm a little nervous, a little easier on Zoom. So it's been really amazing to see what's happened. And then the third way we connect with women is our mentor program. And that's always been virtual also. Um, and 
a big part of our mentor program is serving, going to be in the future, serving organizations and corporations. So because corporations are really seeing, we need to be able to provide mentorship to our women. And one of the things that's been amazing um, that God has provided is this group of sea level women that have such influence. And like Carol, once they get involved and they, um, they're, they're interested, they get involved, and then they start investing their time, their talent, and their treasure, and they're just a huge part of the future of Forward. So I'm so grateful to you, Carol, and for so many other women that are involved with Forward in our sea level community group. So you're hearing a little bit of the story, and I will tell you it's an absolute blessing to be a part of something where you can actually integrate your faith and business. So Diane, you wrote a book to get this launched, and tell me about what propelled you to write the book and to really get this underway. Yeah. Well, great question, and I actually have the book here. Oh, so it's called Work, Love, Pray. I'll hold it up so you can see it. But when my mentor told me to write a book as a foundation for what is now forward, I said to, and it was Bob Buford, and some of you have probably heard of or know Bob Buford. Um, he basically said, you need to do this. And I told him that would be a total miracle from God, that I hated to write. And he said, I can help you with this. I think your story is a good one. So he introduced me to um, the editor of a division of HarperCollins. And she said, I want to do this book and to a ghostwriter. And so that was really the beginning is um, with Bob's encouragement. Um, you know, he has just had such an impact on my life. And some of you may know Bob is now deceased, but Linda is very much involved in my friend. Um, you know, that was the beginning of what I described. And we started with one community group, a website, and a book. And you heard where we are today. Cool. So thank you. So how? tell us a little bit about how your faith affected your approach to business, given that you were in a big corporation? And more specifically, how did you lead and manage with faith as a premise? Yeah. Well, great question. As you would probably suspect from what I said, that my first job out of Harvard Business School was Trammell Crow Company. You would know that, first of all, I was just so blessed to go to work for Trammell Crow because um, the organization has a lot of leaders that are Christians. And I actually, right out of the chute, and this is the confidence side of me that I want to help a lot of women have, I called the CEO, Don Williams, who, um, who is uh, just a dear friend to this day, and asked him to be my mentor. And he said yes. So it was great to have Don Williams, a strong man of faith, who is the CEO of the company. But also I worked with Mike Lafitte. He was my boss for a period of time, and he's the same. So, you know, I want to be empathetic to those of you who hadn't had that experience. And even at Prologis, you know, I was fortunate that I was at a stage in my career when my values were in a perfect match with my uh, workplace, that I had the ability to make a choice. Sometimes we don't have the opportunity to make a choice, and so it's a lot harder. Um, and we have to wait, and we have to be patient, and we have to see what God, when God opens that next door for us. But you know, I always started my day in prayer, and Chris and I pray together every morning. Um, I also, about six, six or seven years ago, started doing the YouVersion Bible study every morning. Um, I think you and I were on elliptical in Washington, D.C., and you were watching, saw me doing it. But I actually summarize it for my family of six um, every morning, and it's just a, a great way to set yourself up for the day. Um, you know, when my kids were little, I read the book, What Would Jesus Do? And 
there were many times I asked myself when there were tough decisions to be made at work, I would say, okay, what would Jesus do? And that was such a great question. And I just think he was the ultimate leader. And many of the verses in the Bible, Jesus is in the marketplace. He's, he's dealing with commerce. There's 2,000 verses related to commerce in the Bible. So, you know, following God's word and trying to strive to be like Christ um, is, is really the best management handbook I know of. How wonderful. Thank you for that. So has your faith ever hindered you in business? Well, and, you and know, I mentioned the, the prologus where I didn't have the perfect match with the leadership team from that standpoint. We really never even talked about faith with each other. Um, and I know a lot of young people to this day do deal with a place that maybe their faith is not encouraged to be shared. So I just want to share there's some really good news out there that, um, you know, we just owe it to so many leaders and change makers like Ken Chenault, the former CEO of American Express. He wanted to be sure that people had the opportunity to be in communities within American Express with other people like them. And he knew it was really a triple win because it would be great for those people. It would be great for American Express because that created a real stickiness and they didn't want to leave the company because they had built these communities inside of American Express. And it also was great for the shareholders, of course. So um, he created a legal structure called employee resource groups. So today, there are 48 Fortune 500 companies that have Christian employee resource groups. And it really came out of Ken's vision. Um, and so I'm going to list some of the companies. And some of you are going to say, really? But it's really true. So, you know, Apple, Google, Facebook, Salesforce, in Dallas headquartered Texas Instruments, um, Toyota. So Toyota's been the presenting sponsor of the Forward Gala last year and this year. And I'm going to be speaking with the Toyota Christian Fellowship in October. And they're actually considering bringing in the Forward Mentor Program to their um, Christian Fellowship Group at Toyota. So it's just really exciting to see. Um, and, and this structure allows Muslim employee resource groups or Jewish or employee resource groups. So it really allows people of different faiths to be in community with each other. And I would just encourage those of you who may be in a place where it you're not feeling like you fit to look for a place that has Christian employee resource groups. Because I think that community within a corporation will really encourage you as you work there. So Diane, I think you've revealed some new facts for many people. When Diane first told me this, I was shocked because I've worked with so many of these companies as a supplier and, and networked with a lot of executives over the years, and I had never heard these. Obviously, it's not well publicized, but for those who need it, it appears to be available. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Let's hope they keep growing. So. At Forward, um, the premise is to affirm women of faith in business and to give them advice. So what, how, what advice do you give to a woman starting her career and then also someone who's more established in their career? Well, that's a great question, Carol. And what, um, when I started Forward, I did a lot of research. And what was great to find was when I looked for, you know, what? what are the things that actually provide success? And this is success professionally, not a whole life success, but Harvard Business School, Harvard Business Review, the Center for Work-Life Balance, and um, Catalyst all did separate research studies, and they all three came up with two key things that were 
important in determining your success professionally. It was number one, did you have mentors or sponsors in your life? And number two, your network. So I always encourage women starting their careers and really in any stage of their career to have your own personal board of directors with mentors with different strengths and you're gonna need different mentors at different seasons. And then as you heard earlier, I was blessed to have Dan and John as mentors, my parents as mentors, Bob Buford as a mentor, Don Williams, who was actually in my company, so he was really a sponsor. So really look for those people and long term on the network side, networking to me is not about gathering business cars. It's about building relationships that are relationships for a lifetime that are real win-win relationships that you're also providing something for them, whether it's um, they're encouraged because what they give you gives them energy or whatever it is, but I just encourage young women out of school and in any stage of life to have mentors and sponsors and also always be building your network. So I can attest, and this is one of our goals with your story, is for you to consider getting into a small group. And at a prior church, I participated in a small group, and it was mixed group. So when I came upon forward, I was really fascinated and actually became a mentor, which was such a blessing to me. And I was a mentor for somebody who was in Michigan and one for somebody who was in Fort Worth. So they aren't necessarily face to face, but it's really rewarding for both the mentor and the mentee. And it's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to share whatever dilemma you have in your faith or your business and just have a voice to share it with. So I found that very affirming. And the other thing is, and there's opportunities here within St. Michael to create a small group of St. Michael members who are in the place of wanting to integrate faith and business more and maybe challenged with how to do that and uh, create a little small group and network to try to grow in that direction. And I have found through the C-level forum with Forward that I have that kind of group. And in fact, I've now got an executive coach for the last two years for somebody I met who's in Chicago. So it's a networking effect, not just within our smaller uh, sphere, but also nationally. So I think this would be an opportunity for any of you who are trying to integrate faith and business and your woman in a career long time or just starting out, there's plenty of ways to grow. So what kind of closing comment might you want to add, Diane? Yeah. Well, Carol, this has been really a pleasure. Um, just know that we at Forward want to serve women in the workplace. So if there's anything we can do um, to serve the women of St. Michael's, we would love to do that. And I just want to end with a couple Bible verses. Um, you know, when I think about how God has just used what I felt he called me to, and as you heard with Carol being on our vice report, we have, now it's 350 women are actually leading forward as a volunteer, as a board member, local group leader, et cetera, um, that I look back and, and Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, um, that God will do more than you could ever ask or imagine. And I just want to just encourage you to never put limitations on God. Um, and then secondly, to know that you are wonderfully and specially made. And that whatever you feel is where your gifts are and where your strengths are, that you should go for it. Thank you, Diane. We really appreciate you coming here to St. Michael's today. Thank you, Carol.